So then each of us will give an account of himself to God, Romans 14, 12. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. I'm Dom. I thank you, Lord, for my brothers and sisters. I thank you for this word this morning. I thank you, Lord, that we are maturing in the body, that we are growing in the body, that we are men and women of conviction, men and women of character. And I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. <laughs> this word came really fast this morning. Hey, I just declare over your life and wholeness, health, and prosperity in every area of your life in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got a word for us this morning. I asked the Lord for a word that would build us up and edify us. But I think he wants us to think this morning to allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us in areas that uh, we might not otherwise be walking righteously in, that we need to be accountable uh, to the Lord for the things that we do. And we can't just do things, wink at it, and walk away and not expect it. We're not going to have to give an account someday for this. And this message isn't about putting you in condemnation. But it's, it's, it's a message to make you think this morning. To at, let the Holy Spirit search your heart. For you to search your heart. And, and see where you stand before the Lord. Uh, the message of grace. That's a powerful message. It's an awesome message. And we need to hear more of that. But we also need to know that God hasn't changed. He's still the God of righteousness. He's still the God of holiness. He is still the God that speaks a word and it stands. His words will never pass. It stands. And when he speaks something, it comes into existence. It doesn't just die off. And God wants us to be like Jesus. We are to be made in the image of Christ. And we are to walk from glory to glory. But one day we're going to have to give an account of what we've done. With our with our stuff, <laughs> basically. And this morning I have uh, two definitions for the definition accountable. One is subject to give an account, and in mind, give an explanation. And in Proverbs twenty two six, it says, "Train up a child in the way he should go; even when he is old, he will not depart from it." When we begin to train up, when we come to the Lord, we're like little babies. We don't know anything. We, we uh, have to be trained in the, in the ways of the Lord, so to speak, and, and the way we should go. And we should absolutely be free in Christ, but we shouldn't be free to do whatever we want. <laughs> yes, and I said it. We're not free to do whatever we want. <laughs> we're not free to lie. We're not free to take the grace of God and wipe our butts with it <laughs> and put it on us. We're, we're, we're not, you know, there's certain things that we're not free to do. With freedom comes responsibility. Really. And, and I heard that when I was about, you know, I hadn't heard it up to that point. When I was about 19, I heard it. With freedom comes responsibility. And, and I thought to myself, I can't live up to that idea. I'm just going to do what I want. But had I thought about it, and had I really thought about it, I would have thought, yeah, that's right. You know, with freedom comes responsibility. I mean, I can't just go out and start breaking laws. I can't, I can't go to the tavern, drink a bunch of beer, hop in my car, and, and, and crash into somebody's house, and then walk away scot-free. I mean, there's a, there's a penalty to be paid for that. And we can't, we can't go out and do whatever we want and then expect and it's just going to be covered and, and it's not going to be noticed and we're not going to have to do anything about it. That's not maturing and that's not growth. <laughs> if anything, it's shrinkage. <laughs> and, and, you know, we should never expect the grace of God to be used as, as something that cover up what we've done I'm searching for words here and, and I'm just trying to hear what the Lord might have to say about this and again 
don't find yourself in condemnation over this. If you're doing some things that you know you shouldn't probably be doing, repent. Get it right with the Lord. And then begin to move forward. Get back into the race. Glory. Let's not let sin weigh us down. Let's not allow things in our lives to build a wall between us and the Lord. He wants us absolutely free, but freedom, uh, there, there is a price to pay with freedom. It's called responsibility. We have to be accountable for our actions. Because one day, we will give an account. And so, ask the Holy Spirit to search you. Right now, Lord, if I have any sin in me, or I am doing something that I shouldn't be doing, Lord, I ask the Holy Spirit that you would search my heart. That you would bring it up before me that I can repent. And we should all be praying that. Glory to God. And in Luke 16.10, Jesus says, One who is faithful in very little is also faithful in much. And one who is dishonest in very little is also dishonest in much. You know, do we wink at things and, and, and say it's okay? We pick and choose our sins We've got our pet sins that we set up here on the shelf. They're the very worst of the worst. And then we've got these ones that we put down here. And these aren't so bad. And then we've got ones that don't even matter. But see, well, when we do these things, when we classify these things, what we're forgetting is God is righteous and holy. And, and, and little tiny sins are probably the worst because we can justify them the easiest. If, if I fall and, and, and have a hard enough <coughs> jar, it can wake me up and I can say, hey, I'm sorry, Lord, and move on. I just did something really horrible. <laughs> but if, if, if I just wink at the little things, and say it's the little things are okay. Um, that's where that's where the trouble really begins. That's where the <laughs> hardening of the heart begins. That's where the turning of the way, <laughs> turning away from the way begins. So we got to keep that thought in. We got to keep that thought in mind when we think we're standing strong. We better be careful because we could be going. <laughs> I know I was just there. And, and, and it's not a very pleasant place to be. So, you know, let the Holy Spirit search your heart. Ask Him to search your heart. Don't let this message put you in condemnation. Uh, I bring it forth to you in love. I love you guys. And, and, you know, this morning I really didn't, when I started thinking about this, I didn't want to do it. But I see that it's probably necessary. And sometimes we need to just have the Holy Spirit check us. Do a self-check. Don't judge yourself. Don't condemn yourself, but allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you in this. And in James 4, 1 through 3, it says, What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder, you covet, and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. One day we will be held accountable for what we've done. Does that, does that take away from my salvation? I don't believe so. I don't believe so. I think uh, Jesus took all our sins on the cross. But at the same time, it will build a wall between us and God. It will cause us to move in a direction that he doesn't want us to. It will cause us to move from underneath his hand of protection. And once we're exposed, the enemy will come in. I know, I've been there. <laughs> and, and, and when I slipped and fell, I didn't, I didn't try to run. I didn't try to put a fig leaf on me. I, didn't, I, I went directly to the Lord and said, Hey, I don't know why I did this, Lord. I'm sorry. I repent. And I allowed the Holy Spirit to mend the fence, so to speak, to <laughs> fix the wall that had been broken, or the, you know, <laughs> whatever had been broken in me, I allowed him to fix it. 
you know, maybe kick the wall down and, and, and opened up the room. I don't know. But, uh, you know, that's not to say that I didn't fight this thing for several days afterwards. You know, I didn't struggle with it for several day a days afterwards. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's not an easy walk that we have, but it's at the end of the day, God will use us mightily. God will use us mightily. Um, and we just got to know that our re we have a responsibility in our freedom. I guess that's the word I'm looking for. We have a responsibility in our freedom. Not to use it to go out and sin. But to use it to bring life to others. Our responsibility is to bring life to others. To build others up. And if we're not doing that, then we need to have a check of our hearts and see what our motives are. And I just want to say thank you for coming and sitting with me this morning on this quick video blog. <laughs> and uh, I just want to say bless your day. I thank you, Lord, for this word this morning. I thank you, Lord, for my brothers and sisters again, I think. And I ask Holy Spirit that we would ask you to search our hearts. See if there be any wicked ways in us, any ways of darkness. And if there is, change us in those places. Change us in those places. Let's, let's begin to grow and mature as men and women in the Lord. And I pray, Lord God, that we would begin to seek you. That we would begin to come alive in you. And in that life, we would bring life to others. And that we wouldn't try to hide, but we would bring out to the light our nakedness. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to the Lord. Glory to his name. Glory to the Lord. Get alone with the Lord. This morning. <clears throat> We're in spiritual warfare. Thanksgiving. 
and we need to have our lives. We need this in our lives to be worshiped to the Lord, to step out in faith and do the things that please our God. We do these things in faith. And I just want to say have a blessed day. Jesus.